The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. It's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, the paper's ace reporter. And when the editor and ace reporter are both covering a city council meeting, a big story must be breaking. Council of the city of Hillsdale, Marmoset County... Well, now, come to order. What's this all about, Susan? I told you, George, I had no idea. Mr. Briggs phoned said he was addressing city council and that there'd be a big story in it. Uh, Briggs wouldn't know a big story if it bit him right in the middle of his big stuff. George. Shirt. He's one of the paper's largest advertisers. He might have something important to say. Well, this was the first time, I suppose. Council has been called in special session this afternoon to have a project put before us by that well-known Hillsdale philanthropist... Wilbur R. Brick. Without further ado, our distinguished fellow councilman, Mr. Brick. George. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Council members, fellow citizens. No doubt most of you are aware of my concern with the continued growth and beautification of Hillsdale, fastest growing little city in the southwestern part of the state. In line with this concern, I have long deplored the appearance of Beaver Park, an unlovely stretch of ground inhabited only by an unsightly baseball diamond, a dilapidated statue of an obscure General Beaver, and the inevitable pigeon. Why, Beaver Park is a beautiful place, George. So keenly, fellow it's traditional. So keenly. Why, it's... Quiet, Susan. Remember, one of our largest <laughs> advertisers is speaking. But I am prepared today to make a proposition at my own expense. I shall remove from city-owned Beaver Park the ball diamond, the statue, and the inevitable pigeons, and shall cause to grow there instead a veritable wonderland, the Wilbur R. Briggs sunken Japanese garden. You can't do that, George. Change the name of Beaver Park. Remove the general statue. Can't do that. Would you like to make a small wager? Council has heard the generous offer of Mr. Briggs. If there is no objection to its acceptance... I have an objection. I beg your pardon. Susan, take it easy. He's a big space buyer. I said, Mr. Mayor, that I have an objection. I should like to ask Mr. Briggs some questions. I'm afraid that's out of order, Miss Armstrong. Let her talk, Mr. Mayor. I'm interested. Watch out, Susan. His fangs are showing. Mr. Briggs. Are you offering any recreational facilities to the children of Hillsdale to take the place of the baseball diamond you propose to put underwater? Uh, well, uh, let them go hunt up a vacant lot somewhere. I see. And do you propose to put any other statue in the place of General Beaver? Not right away, no. Uh, in time, of course, if, uh, if there is a popular demand that my features be memorialized in marble... Uh, the will of the people might overcome my own reticence in this matter. And do you intend to commercialize this new Briggs Gardens in any way? Certainly not. On the contrary, I intend to set up a Carolyn Tower from which uninterrupted music would float out over the gardens with only occasional reminder every 15 minutes or so that this whole thing is being made possible by continued purchase of Briggs products. Uh, perhaps an operatic singing commercial. Oh, brother. Mr. Mayor, members of council, Beaver Park, the ball diamond, a general beaver, are all part of the tradition of Hillsdale. I move that Mr. Briggs' proposal be flatly rejected. You're out of order, Mr. Armstrong. You're out of order. However, in view of your uh, determined attitude on this matter... Perhaps it might be well to table the proposal prior to further discussion. Is that agreeable to you, Mr. Briggs? 
Move in. Watch out, Susan. Here comes Briggs. You don't think he's angry with me? Oh, no, not at all. Miss Armstrong. Uh, yes, Mr. Briggs. Miss Armstrong, I, I'm containing myself. Well, that's certainly nice of you. Containing myself, but with difficulty. Miss Armstrong, I assume that you will assert your feminine prerogative of changing your mind very shortly. Well, Because Mr. if you don't, you and your star reporter here may soon find yourselves out in Beaver Park with the pigeons. <laughs> Good morning, Susan. Good morning, George. George, I've been thinking about yesterday. I guess I could have been more diplomatic with Mr. Briggs. True, Susan, true. And after all, there are two sides to every question. Well... I feel as though I'm deserting General Beaver in the face of the enemy, but... If it'll make you feel any better, Susan, the general can move in with me. I've always wanted a roommate who doesn't snore. Come in. Uh, Miss Armstrong? Yes. Won't you come in? Thank you. My name is Penworthy, Miss Armstrong. Horace Penworthy. Not the Virginia Penworthys, but the New England Penworthys. I see. Well, this is Mr. Harvey, Mr. Penworthy, a reporter on our paper. Oh, yes, Penworthy. Harvey? Of the ship-owning Harvey? No, well, more of the toy boat Harveys. Oh. Uh, Miss Armstrong, I was privileged to hear your stirring defense of General Beaver in city council yesterday. Magnificent. Simply magnificent. Well, thank you. But I might have been a little hasty. Beaver blood. I beg your pardon? Beaver blood. Miss Armstrong, you kept me up all night last night. But I don't regret a minute of it. Well. Something about your earlobes gave me the clue. Behold. What is that? I am a bookkeeper by force of circumstance, Miss Armstrong, but a genealogist by avocation. I have traced completely your family tree. Well, where am I? You are this tender shoot, here at the top, but at the bottom, the sturdy root from which you spring. Here is that mighty soldier, savior of his country, citizen statesman, General Polly Beaver. General Polly Beaver? Uh, wait a minute. Do you mean that Miss Armstrong and General Beaver are related? Without the shadow of a doubt, he is her true progenitor. Well, this is all very interesting, but I and think that... And to think that I was almost ready to compromise principle for commercial advantage in the case of my own true ancestor. Now, Susan, wait. Just because there might possibly be a remote connection between you and General Beaver is no reason George, for... George! To... Betray my own ancestor? Well, how could I? It's easy. All you have to Never. do is... Never! And if Wilbur R. Briggs thinks that he can destroy Beaver Park, he's got another thing coming. General, I am here! Bravo. Spoken like a true beaver. If she starts gnawing down trees, we're through. <laughs> While it is not the policy of this paper to blindly resist change, in this case we must raise the questions. Would the citizens of Hillsdale be happier with a baseball diamond or a sunken garden? The songs of pigeons or of singing commercials? The statue of a noble war hero or the marble image of a stuffed shirt? There can be but one answer. Save Beaver Park. <laughs> citizens of Hillsdale, about Beaver Park. On the one hand, the Wilbur R. Briggs sunken Japanese garden offers certain definite advantages. To make a hasty decision against Mr. Briggs would, of course, uh, would, of course, be obviously unfair. We must examine the case from all sides. General Beaver is... Uh, General Beaver. On the other hand, Wilbur Briggs is uh, Wilbur R. Briggs. This naturally leads us to the conclusion that we must, that we must, that we must say Beaver Park. Good morning, Miss Susan. How do you want your eggs? Fried, coddled, or scrambled? Oh, scrambled, I guess, Patience. 
I'm in a sort of a confused mood. Why? Didn't we win? Haven't we saved your noble ancestor, General Beaver? Yes, but now I'm worried about the paper. The newspaper editor just can't campaign against her advertisers and expect them to... Who could that be? It could be Gregory Peck, but I'll bet on George. Anybody home? It's George. We're in here. Hi, Susan. I... Oh, good morning, patients. Uh, breakfast, Mr. Harvey? No, no time. Uh, but if you do happen to have some bacon and a few eggs... I, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Anything wrong, George? Plenty. They had a message at the paper this morning. Wilbur R. Briggs is on his way down, and he says he wants to have a showdown with you personally. Oh, dear. Well, what are you going to tell him, Susan? And uh, George, I just can't desert General Beaver. Well, he's the only hero we've ever had in our family. All right. There's only one way to handle this thing, then. Psychology. Call his bluff. Face him down. Look him right in the eye. Now, you're not getting psychology mixed up with lion taming. Same principle. Just convince him you're boss and you'll have him eating right out of your hand. Well, suppose I can't convince him. Well. I know. Look. No hand. Hi, Miss Armstrong. Mr. Harvey. There's a man waiting in your office, Miss Armstrong. Yes, this is it, George. Think I ought to go in with a chair and a whip? Just face him down, Susan. And remember, I'm right behind you. Thanks a lot. Well, here goes. Mr. Briggs, I know exactly what you're going to say. And before you do, I've got one or two things that I want... Why, Mr. Briggs, you've changed. Good morning, Miss Armstrong. Some lion. Uh, how are you, Mr. Penworthy? Uh, just fine, Mr. Harvey. I stopped in to tell Miss Armstrong that I'm writing up her case in the genealogy journal. I do a regular column. Out on the limb with Penworthy. And I... I'm very flattered, Mr. Penworthy, but right at the present, I'm... Uh-oh, Susan. The lion. Come in. Miss Armstrong, I have a few things to say to you, and I intend to say them as quickly as possible. Talk right up to him, Susan. Mr. Briggs, One. I'm... You have taken a civic-spirited, unselfish gesture on my part and so perverted it as to make me an object of scorn and hatred in the community. Look him right in the eye. Mr. Briggs. Two, unless you immediately cease this ridiculous campaign on the behalf of Beaver Park, I shall not only withdraw all of my advertising, but advise my numerous business connections in Hillsdale to do likewise. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Are you aware, Mr. Briggs? that Miss Armstrong is a lineal descendant of General Beaver? I, sir, would much sooner be descended from a horse thief. Good day. Which way did the go? Susan, I think he outbluffed you. Now, don't worry, Miss Armstrong. I know that somewhere General Polly Beaver is looking down and smiling. Mr. Penworthy, I only wish that I had inherited the General's sense of humor. <laughs> Back to our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray and the second act of our story. Irene, as Susan Armstrong, has not been helped at all by some advice from her star reporter friend, now that is George Harvey. As a result, we find our female Hamlet debating whether to have integrity and no newspaper, or a newspaper and not too much integrity. To be or not to be. Problems, Miss Armstrong? Problems, Danny. Is Mr. Harvey still around? I think he left. Well, that's one less problem. I heard about you defying Mr. Briggs, Miss Armstrong. Just better to die on your feet than live on your knees. Well, you see, I haven't reached the final decision as yet, Sammy. I know what it'll be, Miss Armstrong. You'll defend the right, even though it costs you everything. Yes, but if I lose all my advertising, I might even lose the paper and... He who steals my purse steals trash. Well, that's one way of looking at it, Miss Armstrong, though the choice seems hard, years from now you'll be able to look back and say, this was my finest hour. Sammy, if this is my finest hour, I sure haven't got much of a future. Good evening, Patience. Miss Armstrong home? Still down at the paper, Mr. Harvey. I think she's writing an editorial. Oh, well, uh, I guess I better not wait. Oh, come on in. Mr. Penworthy's here. Mr. Who? The genealogist. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Mr. Penworthy, you know Mr. Harvey. Hello, Mr. Penworthy. Oh, yes, indeed. The, the steam engine Harvey, wasn't it? Well, one or two of them may have gotten into hot water, but not through choice. <laughs> uh, you can stay, Mr. Harvey, but that joke will have to go. Just a moment of weakness, Patience. Uh, something new in Miss Armstrong's family tree, Mr. Penworthy? One or two very interesting shoots. Very interesting. Have you ever traced your lineal descent, Mr. Harvey? Me? No, no I never have. I'm probably related to the lost dolphin of France or something. I've always felt that I might have royal blood in my veins. If Miss Susan doesn't give in to Briggs, you're going to need every drop of it. Miss Armstrong will never give in. What did her forebear, General Beaver, say at the Battle of New Orleans? The enemy outnumbers us ten to one. Our ammunition is low. Our line is pierced through and through. They're going forward. That's Susan, all right. Just as pig-headed as he was. And I imagine that even now, she's seated at her typewriter, tapping out a fervent appeal to her fellow citizens to save Beaver Park. In viewing the proposed change of Beaver Park into the Wilbur R. Briggs sunken Japanese garden, one must be guided by one principle alone. That there are two sides to every question. While this paper is not retreating one inch from any stand which it may have taken, the right to change one's opinion must be guarded zealously. And with this in mind, the Hillsdale Morning Star continues to move fearlessly sideways. My fellow citizens, no doubt by now all of you have read the latest editorial in the Hillsdale Morning Star concerning Beaver Park. I commend it to you as a model of straight thinking. Not swayed by the passions of the moment, it examines the question thoroughly from all sides, weighs the pros and cons, avoids name-calling, and best of all, says nothing. With fearless leadership of this quality to guide us, let us look forward joyously to the new, the beautiful, Wilbur R. Briggs Sunken Japanese Garden. Excuse me, uh, is the other half of this bench taken? Oh, hello, George. You sure you want to sit down? I'm democratic. I had a hard time finding you. I returned to the scene of my crime, Beaver Park. Hmm. Well, the general doesn't seem to mind. How are you, general? He can't object. He's a relative. Does everybody hate me, George? I'm trying to do the right thing, but I have to think of you and the paper and Sammy and all the others. What'll I do? Mm, that's a tough question. I wonder what he would have done in a crisis like this. Would he have written editorials saying there's two sides to every question? No. I guess not. Would he have knuckled under to Wilbur R. Briggs, allowed him to take the ballpark away from the kids? I doubt it. Would he have compromised principle for the sake of material gain? Never. Never. No. My proud ancestor would hurl defiance in the teeth of Wilbur R. Briggs. Temporize, vacillate, compromise. Harley Beaver never knew the meaning of those words. He would say now, as he said to his troops at the bloody Battle of New Orleans, the enemy outnumbers us ten to one. Our ammunition is low. Our line is pierced through and through. We're going forward. George. Pigeons. Charge. Miss Armstrong, Mr. Harvey, Mr. Briggs just phoned. Oh, he did, did he? Said he was coming down in person for his answer. Well, he'll get it. Better dig yourself a foxhole, Sammy. A foxhole? General Beaver is going into battle. Sure, and Mr. Penworthy's here. He wanted to see you, Mr. Harvey. Me? What for? He didn't say. He's in Miss Armstrong's office. Come on, George, let's see what he wants. I'd like to have everything cleared for action when Wilbur R. Briggs arrives. 
Miss Armstrong and Mr. Harvey. I've certainly got news to you, Mr. Harvey. Really? Uh, what news? About your family tree. Behold. What is that? Here. Here you are at the top, in fine print. But at the bottom, the main trunk from which you sprang uh -huh. is definitely, undeniably, the lost dolphin, son of Louis XVI, heir to the throne of France. No. Me? Royalty? Well, well, what do you know? My studies prove conclusively, Mr. Harvey, that... Excuse me just a minute, Mr. Penworthy. George, you didn't at any time indicate to Mr. Penworthy a desire to be descended from French royalty. Susan, are you trying to... Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I did mention it. Uh, facetiously, of course. I thought so. Mr. Penworthy... Do you base your researches into people's ancestry on whom they are actually descended from or on whom they want to be descended from? Why, their personal desires, of course, Miss Armstrong. Well, that's my hobby, making people happy. And it's much nicer to be descended from someone you like and admire. Don't you agree? Well, yes, but... Then uh, Susan isn't actually connected with General Beaver at all. Huh? In the strict genealogical sense, no. But in the Penworthy system, definitely yes. Susan, you're risking your paper for a general who's a total stranger. That's true, isn't it? But you know, it doesn't really matter, George. The principle is still the same. But don't you think that... It's too late for thinking. That must be Briggs. Well, the same cozy little gathering. Well, he'll come in, Mr. Briggs. Of course. You, uh, you've reached a decision, Miss Armstrong? I have. Good. And you're withdrawing your opposition to the Wilbur R. Briggs sunken Japanese gardens? No. No? Touch one green hair on General Beaver's head, Mr. Briggs, and the Morning Star will lead the aroused populace of Hillsdale to the rescue. In other words, go sell your figs, Briggs. And that goes double for me. You leave me no choice, Miss Armstrong. Consider my advertising contract with you canceled. Before I get through with your paper, Miss Armstrong, Mr. I... Mr. Briggs. Do I know you? Oh, Mr. Penworthy, a distinguished genealogist. Oh. As I was saying, Miss Armstrong... I've I... got something I've been wanting to show you, Mr. Brady. Uh, some other time. As I was... Here. What's that? A genealogical study of your family, Mr. Briggs. I've been working on it night and day. Well, I'm sure that's very nice, but I... Anything, uh, interesting? Oh, I'm sure there is. He worked out our trees. Uh, George. And... Hmm? Um, anything interesting, Mr. Penworthy? Oh, very. Uh, you see, uh, facing the main stem along here, uh, Mr. Briggs, uh, we come to the one responsible for the entire Briggs family in this country. Waldo Briggs. Waldo, eh? <laughs> Pretty important man. Oh, yes. 4,000 people turned out when they hung him. Hung him? No, oh, horse thief. <laughs> Why, Mr. Briggs, you said yourself you'd rather be related to a horse thief than to General Beaver. Now, aren't you happy? And we'll be glad to give the story full coverage in the paper, Mr. Briggs. It'll create a lot of goodwill for you among horse thieves. Uh, Mr. Penworthy, Miss Armstrong, is there uh, any need for publicity on this thing? Well, a public benefactor such as you, Mr. Briggs, a man worthy to have a park named after him. Everything about you is news. Uh, yes. Uh, but you see, Mrs. Briggs is a little uh, peculiar, shall we say, on the subject of my family, and uh, perhaps I was a bit hasty. Uh, General Beaver has always had my profound respect. Hate Japanese gardens, anyway. We, uh, we consider the matter closed? Well, what do you think, George? Well, uh, one thing Beaver Park needs, Mr. Briggs, a drinking fountain near the baseball diamond. Why, yes, of course, be most happy. The, uh, the Wilbur R. Briggs Memorial Fountain? The Horace Penworthy Memorial Fountain. In honor of a truly great man. Oh, not really, Miss Armstrong. Uh, all I want to do is make people happy. You're happy, Mr. Briggs? Me? Of course. <laughs> Never been happier. <laughs> I could die. <laughs> Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will return in just a moment. Yeah. 
Warm enough, Susan? Perfectly, George. But I'm just as glad this park bench isn't our permanent home. Well, Got to fight for principle, no matter what the cost. That's what we used to say in the French royal family. We are vays. <laughs> <laughs> Were you with us or against us in the War of 1812? Against you, I think. But I'm uh, willing to try to make up for it. Sure. Right in front of my relatives, the general. I'm willing to give up my family if you're willing to give up yours. I'm willing. Just plain Susan Armstrong, girl editor. Mm -hmm. Plain George Harvey, boy reporter. You realize that uh, this is what's known in nature as the perfect arrangement? <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then.